Hello and welcome to part 5 of my video series on how to use Blender 2.7. In this video, I'm going to be introducing you to edit mode within Blender, which allows you to model custom objects and custom shapes. Now this is one of the largest areas of Blender, how to create basically anything you want as a 3D model in a 3D environment. To create any object that you want in Blender, you have to start with a basic mesh, and most often this basic mesh is a cube, and that's why when you first load up Blender, Blender gives you a cube in your scene to start with. You don't have to start with a cube, but that's one of the most common ways to start an object because starting with a cube is called box modeling. Now to model any shape that you like, you have to have a mesh selected, and it can be any mesh. It can be a cylinder or a cone or even a Suzanne monkey head. And the way you get into edit mode is with a mesh selected, you press tab. And when you press tab, you switch into edit mode and you can press tab to go out of edit mode. Alternatively, you can always go down to the bottom header bar of your 3D viewport. And I'm not actually sure that you can actually see this in YouTube. So I'm going to just make a second window in case it's cutting the bottom part of the window off. On the header of the 3D viewport, you can also switch between these two modes on a mesh. With this menu, you can switch between edit mode and object mode. There are many more modes. We're not gonna talk about those in this video. We're sticking with edit mode. And when you press tab or use the menu to switch into edit mode, you'll notice that your header of your 3D viewport will change. When you're in object mode, you'll see a bunch of squares in a grid. These are layers within Blender. But if you press tab to go into edit mode, you'll see four new buttons in place of those grid of layer buttons. You'll see a button that is currently selected to be able to select vertexes. So with this mode selected, you are able to select the points where any two edges meet on the mesh of a model. When you go into edit mode, you're able to basically edit vertices, and the next mode is edges, and the next mode is faces, otherwise known as polygons, to be able to make any mesh you want into any other shape that you want or be able to edit that mesh. So within edit mode, everything in terms of selecting objects is exactly the same. If you want to select a face, you have to be in face select mode and you can right click on it to select it. Whenever you have any of the three different sub elements, vertices, edges, or faces um, selectable or in that selection mode, you can right click to select it and then use your gizmo or your keyboard shortcuts, S, R, and G, to move, rotate, and scale, or grab, rotate, and scale that element. So if I want to select multiple elements, in, in other words, multiple vertices, I can do that with the shift and right click. And then I can move those things. I can go into, I'm just gonna press control Z to undo. I can go into face select mode and squash my cube very easily. I can scale it to make it more like a pyramid. And I can select any of these things that I want and you know, move them around and rotate and do any kind of transformation that I want. Please note though that you cannot scale or rotate a vertex because a vertex is just one coordinate in 3D space. It's where two things join. You are able to move it in 3D space because it is a coordinate, but if I try to rotate it, it does nothing. And if I try to scale it with the S key, it does nothing as well. Again, because it's just a coordinate. So, uh, when you're first getting into uh, Blender edit mode, you should practice selecting these three things and be able to move and scale them and rotate them and manipulate them as you please. The last of these three or four buttons is this limit selection to visible button. What the heck does that mean? Well, what it means is when it's dark, your object will be solid or not see-through. If I click this button to make it light, in other words, light can now pass through my object, and now as you can see, I can see the other sides or the back sides of my mesh. Now my mesh is very simple right now, it's just basically a distorted cube, which means it only has six sides, it only has, or six faces rather, it only has um, 12 edges, and it only has eight vertices. So it's very simple, but if I you know, have a very complicated mesh, being able to see through a mesh by default is not a good idea because you might accidentally select faces in the back when you didn't mean to. So it depends what you prefer and what situation you're in, whether or not you want to have your mesh um, solid or see-through with that third, fourth button. So that is an introduction to edit mode. The next thing I want to show you is how to do extrusions. But before I do that, I'm going to go up to File and New and reload my startup file. And we'll start with our default cube again. 
My analogy for using extrusion or the extrude tool is if we think of this cube as a house. My house has four walls and it has a floor and a ceiling. So it has six faces or six walls in total. And let's say I wanna make a garage on the side of my house. Well, I'm gonna press tab to go into edit mode and I'm gonna extrude out, in other words, build upon or make an extension from one of my side walls. So if I want to build a garage, what I need to do with, with a face selected in face select mode is tap E and then move my mouse away from the house. And as you can see, if I tap E and then let go and move my mouse, I made an extrusion. And when I'm happy with how far away from the original cube it is, uh, in this case, I'll go to right, bit, right there and I'll click. And now I have more geometry here. I've extended or extruded out a new set of faces and vertices and edges from my original cube. So this is really powerful. I can keep going with this. In fact, you know, once you're uh, happy with it or not happy with it, you can always adjust it and scale it to your heart's desire. But I'm going to keep going with this and you'll see how Extrude will let you make really kind of the basics of any shape that you like. If I keep on extruding, so I'll press E again. Now just a warning here, if you press E and then right click, that extrusion will be there, but it's not pulled out at all. Right clicking is not really a good idea because it snaps back your extrusion. It's still there, but it's hiding. And if you just kept on going from that point, you'll see that I now have a double edge right here. Now normally you wouldn't even see the gap between them because it would be snapped back to the original location, which is what happens when you right click. So if you ever accidentally see extra dots around your edges, that means you have hidden geometry and that's bad. In a future video, I'll talk about how to get rid of duplicate vertices or duplicate faces. Uh, but for now, you should always just press Control Z to undo if you see those until they go away. All right, I'm gonna keep going and model a custom shape or an object. I'm gonna press E again, move out a little bit. Now it's important to note, and I'm gonna undo that. If you press E, you can decide how far you wanna extrude. So I've now tapped E. And now I'm gonna tap the number two on my keyboard and press enter. What that did is it extruded that face to Blender units because the default cube is two by two by two. So by pressing E and then two and then enter, it uh, made an exact extension of the exact same size of a cube. Now I didn't do that with the middle one, but that's okay, I'll forgive myself. I'm not gonna be that accurate in this video. So now I'm gonna select three at the same time and extrude three at the same time. So with shift click, I'll select the second three, or I'll select one and then hold shift and right click the next two. If I now press E, it's gonna extrude these three as a group. And the important thing to know here, and I'll press two and then enter, is that it did not make internal geometry. I'll say that again, it did not make internal geometry. What that means is that there are no internal walls. You do not see dots floating in the middle of this, uh, um, of these three cubes because I selected them all and pressed E. If I had extruded each one of these separately, E2, enter, E2, enter, you would have seen that if I moved one of these faces around, that I actually still do have those internal walls and internal geometry or internal faces is a bad thing. You don't wanna have internal geometry if you don't mean to have it. So if you're extruding multiple ones together, there will not be internal geometry. I'm gonna press E and then two one more time to make a three by three by one object. And now I'm gonna extrude out these bottom four all at the same time. Because they're separate, they will, they will just extrude normally. And if you can't tell, I'm gonna make a chair. So I'm gonna select these top three. If you feel more comfortable not having uh, your mesh in see-through mode, then you can do that. That way you won't accidentally select background faces. And I'm gonna extrude these up. And as you can see, I have a chair. Now I can press tab to go back into object mode and I can now take my whole chair and scale it and rotate it as one object. And I have a chair that I can use in a scene and I can keep adding to it if I want. But that's the next thing we're gonna talk about. Now that I have a very blocky shape, how the heck do I make this look like a better chair? It's a very blocky, some would say a Minecraft chair. Uh, how would I make this better? Well, I'm gonna go and restart my scene again. So I'm gonna go to File, New, and Reload Startup File. How can I make this block now, returning to our house analogy, 
into a better looking customized house because a house would not just maybe have just the same size of a cube extruded to be a garage and maybe there would be like you know different um, uh, parts of the roof that extrude from different parts of the same mesh the next tool and the last tool I want to show you in this video is the loop cut tool and this is a very very powerful tool if I press tab to go into edit mode um, what I want to do here is start to subdivide this shape up and one of the best ways to do that and there are, there are multiple ways to do it is you can press control R and you can do it within any of the three selection modes vertices, edges or faces it doesn't matter which mode that you're in if I press control R within edit mode and put my mouse over the mesh you'll see this pink purple line go all the way around my mesh depending on where I put my mouse if you put your mouse over an edge it'll cut or all the way around that mesh um, with that pink line so what this does is if you then click and then you can move your mouse to decide where your cuts actually gonna go and if you click a second time it'll make the cut permanent so now I have a mesh with more edges. I have more edges that I can play with. I can modify mesh in more ways because I've basically made a subdivide around my mesh through um, all these faces. And now I have many more faces, many more vertices, and many more edges to play with to make a custom shape. I'm gonna undo that with Control Z. I'm gonna do that one more time. And I'm gonna use a slightly different option this time. I'm gonna press Control R again. And I'm gonna click because I wanna make it around you know this way the way I'm doing it right now and I'm gonna click to make that cut permanent but now I get to decide where it goes along this edge just by sliding my mouse when I click it makes this cut permanent but if I right click it snaps it to the middle of these edges so if you want it exactly centered you know front to back in this case or side to side in this case um, you can just right click instead of left clicking so again control R move your mouse around click and then right click to put it in the center of that edge. So that's using the loop cut tool, but there's even more we can do with it. If I press control R to get my loop cut up and I scroll up, I can get more cuts. Now, here's a warning, this is dangerous. You can go really crazy with this and you can add a lot of cuts at the same time. I would never do that. I would never do more than a few cuts because you know, when you're modeling, it's not a good idea to make your mesh really complicated before you do anything to it. It's a good idea to do things in small steps. So I'm just going to make two cuts, and then I'm going to right click to put those right in the center. And now what I might do is I might select four edges, in, these, in this case, in fact what I'll do is I'll switch over to see-through mode, and I'll select those four which form an edge loop, and I'm going to pull them over a little bit this way, and I'm going to select these four edges, whoops and move them over this way a little bit. Now, if you're more familiar with Blender than a complete beginner in edit mode, you'll know that there are much faster ways of me doing this, but uh, I'm just keeping it simple with what we know so far in terms of this video series. So now I've got these edges that I can play with. In fact, I can make another loop cut around in the other direction right there, and I'm gonna click and right click, and I'm gonna pull the roof up of my house. So I'm gonna pull that one up like that, before I do that though, I'm actually gonna undo, I've changed my mind a little bit. I want a garage to come out of my house, but I don't want it to be the full height of the house. So I'm gonna make a loop cut around the cube this way, and then I'll move it up to right about there. So I'm gonna make an extrusion from this point. That's gonna be my, where my garage sticks out of my house. And now I can move my roof, whatever that part of the roof is called, up. And so now we're seeing how we can make, you know, custom shapes by making decisions about how I subdivide up using loop cuts um, my default cube. I want the roof of my garage to be sort of in the same style, but I want the edge to be going side to side on my screen right now. So I'm going to use Control R again and make my cut all the way around the house in this direction. So I'll click and then right click to put it in the middle. And I'm going to grab this top edge and pull it up right about till there and so as you can see we started with a cube but we're, we're able to make custom shapes I'm gonna do one more example of this I'm gonna do a control R loop cut around my house um, in this direction and I'm gonna make sort of like a breakfast nook at this side of my house so I'm gonna take I'm gonna switch into face select mode I'm gonna take these two faces and I'm gonna extrude them out a little bit as if I were making a little bit of a breakfast nook at the side of my house. 
You can keep going with this, obviously. I can do a loop cut around the base of my house, and I can do a loop cut you know, right about there, and a loop cut right about there. And if I want a step or a porch at the front of my house, I can extrude that out. So as you can see, you can start with a cube and quite quickly have something that does not resemble a cube at all. This is the basic principle of box modeling. Uh, we're going to continue this in the next video in which we're going to model something that's not boxy like this at all. We're going to model a cartoon character's head. But that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.